Hey guys, so I was uh, working on a project in Godot, and I was thinking to myself, I want to write some automated tests here, and I realized something. I never actually done any directory walking in Godot, because I kind of wanted to have the testing suite go on and kind of just go through recursively and look for scene files to run, just do quick smoke tests. Um, the tool is so well integrated with Godot, I mean, you, probably many of you haven't actually done that before either. Not surprising. Um, so. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple, and uh, let's just go over uh, the code and the theory first. And uh, all right, all right. So there's two ways you can go about doing this if you want to do some directory I/O. So what do I mean by that? Like uh, you want to uh, go from a top-level directory and kind of walk through and go through every directory underneath there and find files and do something with them. So in general, this will teach you how to do that. Um, so there's two ways to do that. You can do what's called a depth first search, which is pretty simple. You're going to go uh, first here, then here, then this file, then this one, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then lastly here. So it's called depth first because it goes down in the, the depth of the tree all the way down first. And you can read about this. Uh, it's common in computer science. The other strategy is to go from here, then here, then here, then here, and so on. On each level of the tree, you can kind of think of it that way. That's called breadth for a search. And for that, you have to use an extra data structure called a queue. So I can show both ways to do it, and I'll do that now. All right, first, let's take a look at the directory structure. So I'm going to get out this full screen view here. So um, in my case here, I kind of want to see, I was having trouble between each Godot up upgrade things will start breaking on my old levels. And as you start to refactor, the auto refactoring doesn't always work and some funny stuff can starts to happen. So at the very least, you may want to do something like this too. And I haven't completed that yet, so I'll, maybe I'll show another video where I do. But in general, you want to have uh, some kind of test that just kind of like runs all your levels and gets a, a basic idea of things are working. Or maybe you have some specific uh, sub scenes you want to run, things like that. It's pretty common. So what I wanted to do is I just kind of wanted to go through each one and just run each each scene and see if they're any errors. I can already tell like some of these are old formats, and so I already find a bunch of errors uh, just doing this method. But uh, maybe you have another use case. Maybe you want to go through every image folder and load it all into a scene and do something like that. I, there's many different reasons you might want to go and walk through a directory structure and iteratively find every file. And maybe even it's just to do a caching system. Maybe you're making a search. You want to search through every file in someone's file system, something like that. There's many different use cases. So but the idea is to kind of walk through here and go down each level. And you can kind of see all these, all these different files here. So uh, let me show the code here. All right, so let's talk about this. This is just a basic test. I, I have a something that just opens the scenes and kind of loads them real quick. Don't worry too much about that. These are just auxiliary functions that kind of just run the test. It's specific to what I want to do, um, and I'm not even done with it yet. You want to just co focus on uh, actually walking the directory. Um, so here's the simple way to do it, the depth first search as I was talking about. And as you can see, first we open up the first directory, which is the, you know, the level you're starting at. And then um, this in Godot opens the directory, and there's some extra uh, parameters here you can see. Hopefully, it'll go to it. Let's search for it. Looks like that's not working. So, here you can see uh, skip navigational. So, skip navigational just uh, doesn't parse the dot and the, the double dot. So what does that mean? That's like the current directory. There's an, in Linux, there's a dot and there's a double dot for going out of there. So um, those special uh, directory handles or symlinks, whatever they're called, are not uh, parsed. Usually you don't want to do that. Uh, so I usually pass false for that. And in this case, I didn't want to do any kind of hidden files, like dot files. Those are the kind of things that are hidden. And I guess maybe, I didn't really check to see if this is true, but maybe in the Windows world, um, those are skipped too with this. I'm not sure if it's just a Unix thing or not, but pro hopefully you'd, you'd hope that that would handle both cases. So anyway, so I pass uh, pass true for both to make sure that we skip both of those types of files. Um, so this just gets the first file name in a directory when you first open it. Um, and it it's interesting, like, as, when you get to the end and there's no more directories, 
it'll give you the file name of just blank. So that's why we check this. And that, I'm just looking at API docs to find that out. Um, to make sure we, when we open a scene, it's the actual full path, you have to append the current path you have there to the file name. Um, and so if it's a current directory, um, sorry, if the current thing, the file that we're looking at, the file name is an actual directory, we're gonna go down further. So this is the depth first part. It goes all the way down to the bottom until there's, there's no more directories to go down. And that's this part here. So when it hits a file, it just does this thing. Um, and either way, um, it will proceed to the next file through this loop. And when you're, in, when you're done with that directory in this current call, uh, it needs to call this for some reason in the API to stop uh, uh, parsing the directory. So, but for each time you find a directory, you're actually gonna call itself. So this is a recursive call. I don't know if you're familiar with this. This happens quite a bit in, uh, in programming, but you'll call yourself. Um, the, the danger of that, just make sure you have a terminal condition. So the terminal condition is that eventually, you know, we're not gonna find all directories, so that's fine. There's other cases where you might be doing math where you need to be more, a little more careful about your boundary conditions. So just be careful when you're using it. Uh, you should know pretty pretty quickly though, if things go out of control, uh, you'll have a stack overflow if you keep calling yourself over and over again in most languages. And the same is true with Godot. You're gonna find eventually it's just gonna stop. Um, so if that's intimidating, you could just do breadth ser first search, but in my opinion, it's much easier to maintain depth first search. So, all right, so I added a few things just to, to make this a little clearer uh, compared to before the lecture prints. Um, so let's talk about the breadth first search. So first what we do is we have the directory that comes in that we're gonna start with. We put it in a directory uh, list and we're gonna treat it like a queue. So all this uh, list is not empty. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and pop off the front of it. So it's first in first out is how a queue works. We're gonna open up that directory and this is a handle that Godot term returns us. And I can kind of show you what this does here. See, this is the directory structure. We're gonna new one, we open it and then we just return it. So, and then uh, we do this list operation that Godot has as part of the file IO uh, SDK they have. And then we get, get next just means get the, uh, get the, the first, in this case, it's just the first file in the directory. Um, if it's an empty directory, this will be not there, so it'll be, it actually returns a empty string, which is interesting, but, so it won't do anything. If it does have a file, we continue here. Um, and this is the full pass, so it's the current directory path plus the file name, we'll equal the full pass. So now you can do a complete operation where you can actually open it as if it's, do a normal file. Um, if it's a directory type of file, we'll push it on this directory queue. And if not, we can do some processing. So whatever you want to do here when you're doing this directory walking. Um, this uh, will grab the next one uh, in the directory. And as I said, if it's not there, it will be an empty list. It'll go back out here and we'll grab the next directory. So if this put another directory on the uh, queue, it'll process that. And so when we're all out of directories, we're done. So let's just review what that means. So that means we would process this, then this would just put it on the queue and this would put it on the queue and this would put it on the queue. Oh, oh and I didn't clarify, but these, these are, uh, that are all highlighted a pinkish color. Those are all directories. And obviously anything pointing down, is going to be a directory because it has something contained in it. So that's all that means. But anyway, so once we process this level, then we process this level. And then once that's done, process the last file here. And that's the order. All right, so let's see what happens when we run it. You just push this to run the current scene. And because of Godot trunking this, let's show another output run from the console. Okay, here's a blank console. Well, scrolled off console, let's run it again. All right, it's all the way done. So let's take a look and see what happened. So first it did the recursive walk like you expect. Then it started the breath first walk. Did all the files in the directory and it finished. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, just like or comment and subscribe to uh, get more tutorials like this. And feel free to ask me any questions below. And also, all the code will be included in the links below.